Well, good evening to you. I'm Mark Seal with your Lime Sports World. The Barbados Cricket Association may have another legal issue on their hands in a matter of days. Sajikar UWY will be seeking legal advice concerning how they lost the 2013 elite title to CGI Maple last week. UB ended the season two Sundays ago with the most points, but second place Maple leapt over them after being awarded full points from a protest in their game against Carlton. Now, the pro vice chancellor of the UWI and principal of Careful Campus, Professor Sir Henry Beckles, says their lawyers will advise them on what to do next, if anything. We are very concerned about the process. I am personally concerned about the nature of the adjudication that led to that result. I understand that there is another protests which is in the system in respect of Empire and we might have a new champion if Empire proceeds with their protests. So we do not know. The environment is very unstable. We will be seeking legal opinion on the judicial process that led to this change. And if in our assessment it has been fair and reasonable and in the best interest of cricket, we will do nothing about it. But if we find that there are issues that should be of concern to cricket in Barbados, then we will take all the options available to us. Sir Hillary says seeking legal advice isn't sour grapes about losing to Maple, but instead about looking for the bigger picture. This is, in my judgment, a matter of great concern for the culture of cricket in Barbados that we in the university have committed ourselves to rebuilding. Now, the reason why the university has thrown its resources and its energy behind cricket is because we understand the importance of cricket to Barbados and to the Caribbean, and the university wants to play its role in maintaining, sustaining excellence in cricket. So, the position, therefore, is, is that we will look at it, we will examine it, and if all is well, then we will do nothing. If all is not well, then we will ask other questions. But meanwhile, I would wish to say to my friends and my colleagues at the Maple Cricket Club, congratulations on winning. And I hope that everything that will take place in the next couple of days will allow them to celebrate with full integrity. Staying with cricket, Republic Bank St. Catherine defeated Lyme by five wickets with 10 balls to spare in the fourth quarterfinal match of the BCA Sajakar General 2020 Championship last night. Chasing 139 for victory at Keynes and Oval, St. Catherine scored 139 for a five of 18.2 overs. Man of the match, Kenroy Williams, top scored with 45 of 36 balls, including five boundaries. St. Catherine will now oppose defending champs UE in the second semi-final at Kensington on Friday 7 p.m. The first semi-final, ICBL Empire versus CGI Maple, will be on Thursday, also starting at 7, also at the Oval. Switching sports now to football, the three top teams in Zone B of the Lime Pelican Challenge were all in winner's row at the National Stadium last night. Beijing Elite. 360 Connection and Combined All-Stars all inflicted defeats in their Round 4 encounters. CBC's Melissa Farley reports. Though it might be too early to make a call, every game should count if teams in this competition really want their hands on the top prize of $100,000. And looking at the standings thus far, right Tridents need to pull out of the bottom half if they are to make the final cut. The Tridents' latest defeat two to be exact in as many games, came from Zombie Leaders 360 Connection with a 3-1 loss. It started in the fifth minute when Carl Gibson slotted home the first goal in this game. Then it was the call of a penalty. More pressure on Tridents as Dwayne Stanford stepped up and made it goal number two for 360 Connections. The Tridents fought to pull back their opponents, but just before the first half came to an end, Zakita Samuel sent the third goal in to leave the Tridents down 3-0 at the half. And then finally, Tridents netted home at least one. Keon Atkins putting his name to it, but it wasn't enough as Tridents took another defeat, still without a point in the tournament. Now Bajan Elite, who shares the top spot with 360 Connection on six points in that zone, 
were also in winner's row. Their victory came over last year's losing finalist, Firehouse. It was a 2-0 win for Bajan Elite, where Mario Harewood set in the pace, leaving Firehouse in some trouble. And then his teammate, the promising Kimar Headley, sent the second goal to the bar, and that was the final deal as Bajan Elite took their second win. Meanwhile, Combine All-Stars had an easy run with Sportstown Galaxy to claim their win. Damien Husbands led All-Stars with an early lead in the 19th minute, but it was short-lived when Maradona Levine posted the equalizer for Galaxy. Tristan Paris then broke the lock in the 36th, leaving the All-Stars up 2-1 at the half. It took a while before another was scored. It came in the 80th minute, and it was Paris again for his second goal in the game and the third for All-Stars to take the 3-1 win. Melissa Farley, CBC Sports. After a delay due to the lack of sponsorship, the Ronald Suki King International Checkers and Drafts Festival will now officially get started tomorrow. The original 10-day event, which was due to commence over the weekend, has now been reduced to seven days at Divi South Winds Hotel. Barbados Checkers and Drafts Federation had won the bid to host the international Go As You Please qualifier, which will select a player to challenge Suki for the world title. But King says it will only be possible if the funds are in place. The world title might be hard because they had it for 22 years and that is going to take a long time getting back. I can hold it for another 22 years. But we definitely need some funds. Um, I'm depending on some more companies to come in and uh, make sure that Barbies is represented properly because I've never failed in Barbies yet. Not when it comes to checkers. And I don't think I'm going to give up yet. President of the World Drafts Federation, Harry Otten, was in Barbados ahead of the festival, and he believes sponsorship is the only obstacle preventing Barbados from hosting the world tournament. Players might come from all over the world, and it could be played here, and it could be televised or could be seen by the internet live uh, on many boards. Uh, I just organized a big tournament in Wageningen, the town where I founded my company. Uh, we had 120 players, uh, something like 80 males and 40 females. Uh, big tournament with very good prices. Uh, and I believe it, it's the strongest tournament we had ever. And it would be a good thing when somebody would sponsor a tournament in Barbados that, uh, that we could have a World Cup in Barbados. And then alongside we could uh, show all the other variants of uh, drafts. The festival starts with an opening ceremony at 9 in the morning, with games commencing at 10. Seven participants are competing in what is being described as one of the most grueling stand-up paddle surfing events in the world. It's the 2013 Last Man Standing Day and Night Challenge, being hosted right here in Barbados this week. The event that was scheduled to begin today is in its fourth year, and organizers say it is going to be a difficult race. We're looking to get an early start on the designated morning. Uh, we hope to get the guys off at least by 6 a.m. Um, it's a grueling paddle going from south up onto the east around the, the ragged point area. And then we hope to, for them to be able to, to shoot right down to the north point of the island and make that turn at least by 6 in the evening. Um, it's imperative for us uh, from an organizational standpoint to have them around the north point before dark. As long as they get on to the, to the east coast, to the west coast, um, the lights from the hotels and houses allows them to, to make that paddle, that segment of the race, throughout the night. The record time of 15 hours, 17 minutes is held by top local surfer, Brian Talma, who has been promoting the sport in the island for a number of years. Also an organizer, Talma highlighted some of the quality world participants for this year's event. We have Bern um, Rodiger. He's coming in, and um, he is one of the best windsurfers out of Hawaii. He's a waterman. He paddle surfs. He won, just won the Cape Hatteras um, event, part of the American Windsurfing Tour. And also last year, he won the most prestigious windsurfing event in the world, which is the Aloha Classic. So he's a full-on waterman. He will be coming. We also have... Um, Fiona Wilde, she is 16. She will be trying to attempt to be the first woman to actually paddle around the island. Last man standing will run until Sunday. 